everyone, so we can get started. Um, so we can start with a bit of housekeeping. Thank you so much for coming, by the way. Uh, I'm Victoria, for those who don't know me, um, and I work for Family SOS. Um, so when you came into the Zoom call, we have all of your mics turned off to start. Um, but feel free to turn them back on if you have any painting related questions or anything like that. Um, if you're having any tech questions or any tech problems, just put it in the chat and then Mackenzie's going to help you out with that if Mackenzie just gives a little wave there. Um, and also this session is being recorded. So just so you know, a couple people couldn't attend tonight. Um, and the best way to view this so you can see Katie, who is the artist tonight, is to click on speaker view. So that's in your top right hand corner. So if you switch from gallery to speaker view, that'll make it a lot easier for the rest of the night to see what's going on. Um, and then after um, we have a guest speaker, we have Quantrell Provo here. Hi, Quantrell. Um, after he speaks, you can pin Katie's video to your main screen so you can see her through the whole night. Um, and also, some Zoom calls have been getting hacked into lately. So just a little heads up if that does happen. Um, we're just going to take a little pause and we're going to remove that person and then we're going to start again. So we're not going to leave. We're just going to join back in. Um, just a heads up. So to get us started, um, we've invited Quantrell Provo here tonight to say a few words to start us off. Um, he's the creator of the Stop the Violence movement. And he does amazing work in the community. Uh, he was also one of our award recipients for the Courage to Give Back Awards this year. Um, yeah, so just draw your attention to Quantrell for a moment, please. Can everybody hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to say a few words. Um, basically, um, the importance of helping the community and giving back and um, the little things that make a difference. Um, for me, um, in doing Stop the Violence, when I started Stop the Violence eight years ago, um, it was about making a difference, and it still is about making a difference. And it's not big things, it's the little things that um, tend to make make the, the biggest impact. Um, a bunch of little things that make a, a big impact on the lives of others. And so over the years, I've been able to um, make an impact because of the little things. And so I always tell people, you know, you can make a difference. It doesn't matter how big or how small, every little thing counts. Um, that's all I'm doing. And everyone's like, oh, it's just, it, and you feel better. I don't know. It, for me, it's, it's just a blessing to be able to help others and to be able to create change and make a, a difference in the community um, by doing the little things. Um, so all of you, um, with everything that's been going on in the world over the last I, I can't even count because times just change. It feels like it's been three years, the last four months. But with COVID-19 and, and then all the tragedies that we've had and then everything that's going around um, in the world, we can just do our part um, and make the best of it and, and just make a difference, um, impact the lives around you um, and, and help the community and, and, and make the community a better place. That's the only way things are going to change is that we continue to look inside ourselves and say, well, listen, I can do this um, to make a change and make a difference. Um, so I hope tonight on uh, the paint night goes amazing. Um, I have to leave uh, and I can't paint tonight because I have to do something with my son, um, unfortunately. But I just wanted to say a few words to encourage you guys to continue to, you know, help the community. You guys are doing a be beautiful work, uh, Family SOS. Uh, big shout out to you guys. Always doing amazing work in the community. And uh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. That's too bad you can't paint tonight, but you'll have to, we'll send you the recording and then you can follow along later, maybe. Exactly, and I'll, do, I'll actually do it with my son. That's what I'll do. Oh, perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, <laughs> now Mackenzie is going to introduce our artist tonight, Katie. Yes. 
So Katie is a local artist from Halifax who recently graduated from NASCAD University with a Bachelor of of fine arts and she creates drawings and prints that are a visual exploration of mental health struggles um, encouraging discoveries based on shared experiences so she is influenced by her love of storytelling comic books and video games so welcome katie thank you so much for being with us thank you guys for having me i'm really excited for tonight <laughs> should be really fun yeah everybody's ready to paint so. yeah Perfect. Well, now, um, and now if everybody's in the speaker view, you can click on Katie's video and then there's three little blue buttons at the top of her screen and you can click pin. So it's pin video and then you can see Katie throughout the whole night. Um, yeah, so you can get started with painting now. Awesome. Um, all right, so I just had a couple tips, and I don't know how many people read them, but I thought I'd just go over them quickly. Um, I just have them here, so I'll prop them up on my laptop. Um, so I just had a couple painting tips. I don't know if anybody, like, what everybody's skill level is, if this is your first time, or maybe you're an expert, or whatever the situation may be, but I thought I'd just run through them a, a few um, just quickly before we get started. Um, so first of all, the main rule of this is have fun. Have as much fun as you possibly can. If it doesn't look like mine, that's totally fine. Paintings are not supposed to look identical. I know paint nights, everyone always has like the, yay, we did 12 paintings that look the same, but if yours looks different, good on you. That's great. Um, so now into a couple tips too. Uh, so using the right amount of water with acrylic paint is really important because you do need a bit to spread it along the canvas, um, but you can't use too much. So it's it's kind of like a, let's say, maybe 90% paint, 10% water, somewhere around that, 85 maybe, um, and that will just give you enough. And you can actually thin out your paint a little bit more too if you want to get more of like a splash effect or something. Um, and the next thing is allow your layers to dry. So I'm gonna take you through in a way that's gonna allow each layer to dry as we paint because it's going to be really important or else the bottom layer is going to start peeling off. Sometimes you get what we call bald spots. It looks really funny. It's just when all of your paint comes off and you just have a little weird bald spot. <laughs> um, also, another thing about acrylic paints on top of that is that they dry really fast. Um, and there is good things and bad things about that. So bad things, maybe you might put something down and then you might not be able to like you might not like it but the good thing about it is that they cover up really easily and you can pile them on and use as much paint as you want you can go inches high with acrylic paint or whatever um the fourth one is that you always want to i, I tried to make a painting especially when i'm not in a classroom with you guys which would be a lot easier um and i know zoom is it's fantastic for everything that's been going on lately, but because I'm not there with you, I tried to make something that was a bit more simple. If you do want to mix your paints at all, if you have a palette or you just want to mix it inside the cups that they gave you, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, a one rule of thumb for mixing is always mix your darker paints into your light paints. So if you want to get a light blue, always take your white and put a little bit of blue into the white and then mix it. Because if you try to do it the other way, you're going to end up with a lot of slightly lighter blue. Um, so that's just a kind of easy tip if you do feel like you wanna mix a little bit. We will be doing a bit on the canvas anyway, but that's, we'll get there. Um, the next one is take a step back, literally from your canvas. If you are, I always get really focused and I get really close to my paintings and I like just struggle to see the details. And then I realize when I take a step back, I'm like, oh, this could be fixed here or this could be fixed here if you need to. Take a break, go get another glass of wine if you're over 19, um, or you know, step back a couple feet and just look at it from afar and you might notice some things that you didn't notice when you were really close up. Um, six, everyone's style is different. Again, this comes back to the first thing I said. If your painting does not look like mine, that's totally fine. Um, I did it in a style that I know that I can do, but if you wanna do something different, if you wanna use different colors. If you want to make it all red, you're more than welcome to do that too. But um, yeah, we'll get to that. And um, that's it. Have fun. <laughs> and if you have any questions too, I think Mackenzie is in the chat. Um, so you guys can either just turn on your mic or 
uh, if you have your camera on, just wave at us or whatever, and we'll make sure that we get to it. Um, I'll try and take as many questions as possible. And if I'm going too fast for someone, just tell me to slow down. Good? I know nobody has their mic on, so nobody can be like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> so I'm going to turn you to the wall now. I'm just sitting on my floor. So that's, is that close enough for everyone to see? Just give me somebody in the nod. Yes. It looks good. Yeah, thanks. Okay, okay, good. All right. So I'm going to take this one off, and then I'm going to put a scary white canvas on here. All right. And then two, I think, I believe everyone got the same colors, so I tried to guess we should have a white, a black, a blue, uh, a yellow, and a red. So we're actually going to start with our black, and you're just going to paint the entire canvas black. So you just want to wet your brush a little bit. If Also, one more thing, if you have a new brush, you might need to put your brush in a little bit of water and kind of move the bristles around. Um, if it's new, it will have like a little bit of a, uh, like a resin on it to keep it from bending during packaging. So if, you, if it is, just kind of wet it a little bit and then you can just move the bristles around and it will soften right up. So we're just gonna get to it now and you can start wherever. So while we're painting the screen black, we just have a really quick video that we're gonna show everyone about what's been going on over at our Greystone Center right now. Um, so I'm just gonna share my screen and put that on. All right, hopefully maybe everybody's done. I know I paint a little bit quicker. Also, one more thing, don't worry about the edges. You can get to that later. I always find my edges are really messy until the end of the painting anyway, so don't really bother with it. Um, and we'll get to that part when we get to, you know, signing and blah, blah, blah. All right, so I am gonna move on. Um, like I said, if anybody needs more time, maybe just a couple more seconds. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our brush and you wanna clean it really good, especially if you're using the, uh, the one that you just used uh, black paint with. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna, it should be your, I think everyone got two brushes, so you should have like a pointy one and you should have like a one that's angled or like a flat brush or something like that. So you're gonna put it in water. So you're gonna get it a little bit wet and then you're just gonna very gently dip it in your white paint. So you don't even want to get really a lot of paint on there. So it'll just be a tiny bit. And then hopefully everyone has something behind their canvas because this part's a little bit messy. You're going to 
aim your flat part of your brush towards your canvas and you're just gonna pull back like if you're cleaning a toothbrush or something and you're just gonna flick and splatter the white on there and you can do as little or as as many as you want this is going to be our kind of stars is that possible to see on my screen it's a little bit hard to see isn't it <laughs> no we can see yeah it looks okay perfect does that make sense though to everyone like if you just kind of flick your paint a little bit and you'll get like little kind of white speckles everywhere and you can go back later too if you want and you can put like big stars in um but we're just going to put that down for now so that's kind of the messy, the messier part. So hopefully there's something behind it. No, it's gonna kill me if I get paint on the walls. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, and then your next step, for those of you who are a little bit faster, everybody else, no worries, is you're gonna take your blue. And if your black is still a little wet at the bottom, that's okay. But you're gonna take your blue and you're gonna paint about the bottom third so this is going to be where your horizon line is so i'll pull this one up just for show well you can't really see it that much but mine's about a third of the way up and it doesn't have to be a clean line it could also if you're you know if you like to you could blend it in with the black a little bit if the blue isn't the right color blue maybe you want to put a little bit of the black in it to darken it up or maybe you want to put a little bit more white in it um, and we'll get to this kind of stuff later but for right now just your bottom third blue. And like I said, you can blend it into your black or you can make it like very kind of flash against it. I'm gonna need a bit more white there. Sorry, can I just ask Katie while you do that, Yep. If you could repeat the last step, I was still starring. Did you say oh, make a okay. horizontal uh, blue line with navy? Yeah, so okay. what you want to do is you want to fill your bottom, the bottom one third of your painting yep. with blue. So if your black is still a little bit wet like mine is, and it might be, the only thing, like if you wanted to, you could speed up the drying with a hair dryer, or maybe if you're, if you're outside painting, um, which looks lovely. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, you could uh, dry a little bit faster, but if you are finding that the black is getting kind of is overtaking the blue that you're using, you can put a little bit of white into your blue okay. or blue into your white. Oh, got it. Thank you for repeating. No problem. Katie, do you have any tips for like brush strokes, like to make it look nice like yours? Mine's kind of looking blobby. So I would say the best thing is too, is probably your consistency um, is what you want to pay most attention to. Um, if you're finding that your streaks are kind of turning out like, I'll just paint on the back of this. Um, or let's see. If you find your streaks are kind of turning out a little bit like you're getting like the grain in it, that will be your paint kind of picking up the texture of the canvas so that means your brush is too dry and if it's kind of dripping down your canvas that means your paint is too wet um so it's kind of just about getting the consistency right with your paint um and like i said if your background's a little bit too wet like mine is pretty it's fairly um humid in here <laughs> should have got a fan um but if your paint is still really wet you can kind of add more color and I just like to make really wide strokes and put more paint than you think you need. Um, that's always kind of a good rule of thumb. If you're finding that your paint is not reaching, you know, one side of the canvas, just put a bit more paint on there. Did that answer your question? Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. No problem. And then, like I said, if you want to make it a solid blue line, you can definitely do that. Or you can blend it up a little bit into your black. You could put a bit more black up here and blend it down. Um, and I like the stars to be in the sky, but you could also sprinkle a little bit on the water if you wanted to as well.
And if you're finding your water a bit dark, you can always go in and add a bit more white and just kind of stroke it across. And we'll get to kind of making those wave shapes later as well too. Katie, if I use uh, the hair dryer to kind of speed up the drying process, do I need to put it on cold air? Nope, you should be fine with warm. I just wouldn't put it like right next to the canvas, like just put it a bit back, but yeah, nope, that will have no effect on it. It might, uh, it will probably dry quicker actually with the heat. Okay. Um, yeah. Great, thank you. No problem. And I'll leave that there for a little bit and then everybody can kind of catch up if you're a little bit behind. Actually, I have a question for you guys. Did you guys find it, Family SOS, did you guys find it hard to adjust to COVID regulations or was there a lot of kind of um, middle time that you had to figure some stuff out? I can answer that. That is the, um, I'm Nancy and the staff at Family SOS did a fantastic job. They could not do what they would usually do at Family SOS. So they pivoted and did the stuff that other people couldn't do during COVID and they picked up. So they've been doing all kinds of great food delivery and helping agencies that couldn't find volunteers and workers during COVID. And they've been doing all kinds of great uh, programs to fill in the gaps from other people, uh, other, other agencies. And as things change so quickly, they just keep pivoting around in circles, doing all kinds of great stuff. So now we're getting back to continuing doing those things and offering some kids programs coming up. So Hats off to the staff at Family SOS. They are fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah, I know it's been tough for everyone, but sounds like you guys kind of got a handle on stuff right away. Thanks, Nancy. All right, I think we're okay to move on. Um, you're Paint might be a little wet still, but we're just gonna have to keep trucking. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do this little skyline. So what I like to do is take the thinner brush. My kind of my general rule of thumb is always use the biggest brush that you possibly can. So if you're doing small details, small brush is fantastic, but I wouldn't recommend painting an entire canvas with a brush this tiny. Um, so for this point, I would say that your small brush is gonna be your, your go-to. So you're more pointier of the two, or if you have uh, smaller ones at home, that's great too. And we're actually just gonna take a little bit of white. And you can, like in this painting, I didn't really draw the whole, the whole like line of the skyline. I kind of just did a little bit in here to just kind of, you know, suggest that there was a city or something. So I'm just gonna pick a little spot in the middle here and I'm just gonna do some little dots. And you can draw a thinner line outwards if you wanted to. You could do a little bit of like this. If it's blending in, you can just keep piling up. It will be much easier once everything is a little bit more dry. So you can go back and this will just give you a little, kind of a little reference of where your fireworks are coming from. And you can also put it over here if you wanted to make the fireworks kind of coming from there. I just did mine center, you know, the easy way. I have a question for you, Katie. For sure. What is the best part for you about teaching others how to paint? Because I know like at Family SOS, we do, we're very, you know, community oriented. And I feel like teaching people a skill is something that's very, um, like brings people together. So I'm just wondering what's the best part of that for you? Um, that's actually a really good question. I, I guess because like I've been painting since I could hold a pencil, you know, that like classic, oh, she was always doing it. Um, 
so I've always found a lot of joy in it and for me it's very um I would even say therapeutic when I was in school it was not therapeutic because it's very busy um but I guess just seeing people like get it or when they you know that light clicks on and they're like oh like this is what it's supposed to look like or um when I started the first time I started teaching I, I was actually working at Michael's um and I really enjoyed it and then my sister brought me into her fourth grade classroom and I loved doing it with the kids because it was just so like they're so incredibly creative and they just take whatever you have like whatever idea you give them they just go full force into it and they're so so fantastic to watch so i guess it's just watching people come up with their own creative ways to do the thing that you're doing and i know like this is a little bit different because it's kind of like paint night you know it's supposed to be instructional and i i get that for sure but it's always really interesting to see people come up with their own ideas and even just find a little bit bit of creativity that they didn't know they had um so yeah, I guess that would be the best part is just looking at other people's creativity because that's really inspiring to see as an artist myself. I'm just like, I'm always taking from other people. So that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. It's always really nice. Also, if you want to, you can put a little bit of like yellow for like warmer glow in the city here. Paint is still real wet. Whew. Is it warm for everybody else? I feel like I'm inside an oven right now. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so humid. Oh, it's been wild, but I can't complain. Mm. Yeah, the humidity is probably not good for letting the paint dry. Yeah, there might need to be a couple extra um, seconds in between our layers here, because mm -hmm. if we try to paint white on this, we might just get a, a little bit of a mess. Um, I guess what we could do, this isn't really dry, is it? Oh, it's not that bad. What we can do next is we'll start to do, is everyone's painting, oh, I guess I can't really ask questions coming. Is everyone, does, is anybody's painting actually dry at this point? I know it's a little bit humid out, mm. so it's probably, eh. No. Okay, that's fine. We'll give it a couple more seconds. Um, that's fine. Does anybody have any good music playing right now? <laughs> All right, you know what? Let's just start. Let's just go. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our skinny brush and we're gonna take a white and we're gonna start our fireworks. So you could do one, I'm just gonna show you this example. You could do one big one right in the center. You can do a bunch of tiny ones. Um, you could do smaller ones coming up that are getting bigger. Um, I'm probably just gonna do kind of something similar to this so I can just kind of keep that there. Um, probably pin it up actually. Uh, and that way you guys can kind of get a sense of, let me pin this one up. There, can everyone see that one? I know it's a little wonky, but. Yeah, that's nice to have it there for reference. Good, good, good. I don't want to put too many holes in my wall, but that's fine. <laughs> so how I do my fireworks, and if you have a better idea or something else that you would rather do, you're, again, more than welcome to take creative, um, creative steps. But how I like to do it is I put like a little starter dot, and then I like to have a very small amount of paint. And what you want to do is you just want to pull it out. And you can start to just do it. Something else you can do as well, too, if it's easier for you to visualize, is maybe put your dots as to where, like the bigger dots, as to where you want your fireworks. Because mm. that might help you plan out a bit of like where you want them. 
And then, like I said, you just want to start from your center. And we're going to start with white at the base. And then you can put your colors on top of that. But especially because it's a black background, it's going to be much easier. Um, yellow and red are specifically very tough colors to get to cover something else, unless it's white. So what you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to pull it out like this. And you're just going to keep pulling from the center and you're going to kind of flick right at the end so that it almost fades off. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you move that a little bit closer if that helps out a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you're just going to do that over and over and over again. I know it sounds very tedious. But just think of it as that nice tranquil you time. <laughs> And then as you get started on one, what you can also do is move to another one while this one is drying. And that way when you come back to it, it will be easier to layer on top of. So I'm going to leave that one for now, even though I know that it's not where I want it to be. And I'm just going to start at the center of maybe a little tiny baby firework over here. if anyone's planning on seeing fireworks for Canada Day. That's a good point. Mm. That'd be nice. Are they having the displays? I think so. I, I think know. they're having them and people can watch them virtually. That's, that's my understanding. Oh, that's such a nice idea. Yeah, I think so. You should take your mother out for dinner and fireworks. Oh, who said that? <laughs> I should. Everyone should do that, shouldn't they? Yes. <laughs> And the really nice thing about acrylic paint is because it usually dries so fast is that if you mess up, you can just paint right over it. <laughs> if there's something you don't like, get rid of it. <laughs> that happens all the time. I don't know if anybody's ever painted with oils before but they are so much worse and <laughs> I know so many people have seen like beautiful oil paintings at my school um, and people are so like magic things with oil paintings but I just never had the patience for it. <laughs> I always always just like I need it to dry and oils usually take like somewhere between a week to a month to dry and then I think upwards of a year to fully dry so it's a little bit a little bit of a I didn't know that <laughs> yeah oh so my goodness it takes so long what you have to take a year to finish a painting to fully cure I guess because oils cure by chemical reaction not by like um like we're acrylic because it's water-based mm -hmm. it dries when all of the water gets um evaporated from it so then it's it's done but because oils are oil-based, they take up to a year for a painting if you painted it really, really thick to fully dry, which I find absolutely mind-blowing. Like, I don't have a year to sit there and wait for it to dry. No. <laughs> <laughs> what if you wait six months and then you bump into it and ruin it? <laughs> right? That's terrifying. You or start if you over with your mind, you don't like it. <laughs> 
<laughs> a little bit of danger there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so once you have kind of your white base down too, I know mine's not really fully white yet, but I'm just gonna start with the next step in case somebody is ahead of me or you're just sitting there waiting. You can keep going with white as well if you want them to just be all white fireworks. Um, this is why we gave you the red and the yellow so that you can kind of make a choice of which one you would like. I did red and yellow. You could do, maybe if you wanted to do, I don't know, if you had school colors or, if this is all about celebration, maybe it's blue fireworks, or maybe you wanna do Canada Day, so you wanna do red and white. Um, so this is kind of where you can take a little bit of like your own creativity. So if you, if you wanna follow along this one, you're more than welcome to. So I just did kind of like reds and yellows. This one has a bit of both in it, so it makes like a little bit of like an orangish, I'll bring that up there so you can kind of see. It like blends a little bit and makes a little bit of more of an orangish color. Um, if you're familiar with mixing paints or you want to test it out and you have a palette, you're more than welcome to mix your colors a little bit. Um, hopefully everyone knows their primaries and their secondaries at this point. Um, <laughs> blue mixed with red makes purple, yellow mixed with blue makes green, and red and yellow make orange. So if there's another color that you're kind of looking for, you can definitely mix that up. Um, and then basically what you're going to do is continue on with that same streaking, but you're just going to kind of layer it over and over again. And as you get to the more center pieces, so these ones are really nice and wide. And as you get kind of, as you layer more and more, maybe you want to get a little bit smaller. So it makes it look like they're coming forward or going off to the side or whatever it is. Good. Mm -hmm. I know nobody can, say, nobody can say like, Hey, okay. <laughs> Just a quick suggestion, sorry, the lids that the paint came in, those are really good palette mixers. Yes. Oh, that's a good point. There you go. Dee Dee, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those uh, color combination things in the chat there on the side, but that's I need fantastic. you to repeat them for me uh, more slowly. <laughs> sure. I know I talk, my whole family talks really fast. <laughs> my grandmother has no idea what we're saying, so we just go Zoom. Um, all right, so blue and red make purple. Okay. And the next one? And red and yellow make orange. And then yellow and blue make green. So you can do any combination of that. Again, make sure if you're mixing, you're always putting your darker color into your light color. So let's say you want to make a green, you're going to take your yellow and let's say you put some on your little palette. Actually, I can mix some right here for you guys. These are a little bit wet. You're going to take a little bit of yellow into your palette. Let's take a little bit more. And you're just going to take the tiniest bit of blue because your blue has a lot, a lot of and even with just that little bit of blue, you get a nice little kind of limey green there. If that's your, your preference. And then again, if you're mixing your, so you always want to pick your lighter color first. So if you want to make an orange, you can take your yellow, put it maybe off to the side so you don't mix all of your yellow. And then you're going to put a little tiny bit of red in. You only need a little bit of the darker colors because it, it's the darker they are, the more pigment they'll have in them, which means that the pigment, the color will spread really, really fast. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to stick them in the chat there. So Katie, I'm really sorry, but like, I don't quite totally get what, what your, can you just say one more time, not the mixing, but like the actual, are you just doing the exact same thing you were doing with the white, but now with a different color? Yep. Okay. I'm still doing this white because my black is still pretty wet. So I'm just trying to layer up so that when I put the yellow on top of it, uh, it's not just going to blend into the black because that would just make a really gross brown color. 
Okay, because I couldn't see any color. So now I get what you're doing. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still, it's still all white. You're not, <laughs> you're not missing anything. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no problem. I'll try and do some red here. I just realized my... There, now you should see color. <laughs> Better? <laughs> so again, you would just want to keep kind of flicking outwards. So if you start in the middle, you just kind of flick and you'll get a little bit of a lighter shade at the end. And then you can just keep layering your different colors. And eventually the cool thing is, is your paint will actually mix on your palette if it's wet. Um, so if you have, let's say you started with a red firework and you didn't let it dry, if you put a bit of yellow on, it might go a little bit orange, which could be good or bad. <laughs> but if you're painting this for someone and maybe they just graduated, what are their school colors? Or if you're painting this for yourself, what are your favorite colors? Yeah, congratulations to any 2020 graduates, if there are any here. I think it's all the virtual proms this week. I've been seeing a lot of that around. Oh. <laughs> Amazing yeah. that we have the ability to do that, but like, it's so sad. Yeah. I didn't even want to go to my prom and I remember going and being like, if I miss this, I would have been sad. <laughs> totally. <laughs> My yeah. son had one of his graduating classmates over today at the house, and he was saying that while it was kind of a bummer, it was kind of nice not they go to a pretty big high school. So it was also nice not to, to get it done in kind of four minutes instead of waiting for three hours, yeah, for the grad, not the prom, <laughs> that not have to wait for three hours for everybody to get called up. That's oh, awesome. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although it's special, it's it can be brutally long. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's always so warm. <laughs> like, I'm like, do none of these places have air conditioning? <laughs> like, you know people are going to be in your building. A bunch of sweaty teenagers. Katie, I see you adding some color to the sky. I am. So my next step here is if you would like to, on this one, I kind of just did it once I was finished, but I just wanted to test it out how my black was drying, which actually it seems like it's almost all dry, um, which is great. So what I like to do next is kind of, if you'd like to, uh, to add a bit more of like that pop feeling. You can put a little couple little streaks coming out of your fireworks as well. I'll bring this up to the screen so it's a little bit easier to see. So it's almost like if you've ever read a comic book, it's like action lines. They let you know that the person is moving in that direction. So you can put like a little couple extra things. They don't even have to be touching. They don't even have to be the same color as the firework. Um, and that just kind of is more, adds a bit more of like these little kind of pops. Does that make sense? I know I talk really weirdly sometimes. <laughs> My own little artist language. <laughs> I think it looks great. Well, thanks, Kenzie. You doing it too? <laughs> yeah, well, sort of. <laughs> I might have to finish it after. So, um, Katie, uh, I, another question, like, the, I guess I just have to like wave my my canvas around to now I've got so much stuff on the white that everything I put on top of it is turning it into like just a light version of that color. Like yours just seems so nice with the white coming out the middle and then like the colors on the outside. Mine doesn't seem to be like that. <laughs> so for this one, I had quite a few um, trial and errors with this one as well. And I also had a lot more than like 45 minutes to let it dry so I could figure it out. Um, okay. Which, so this is one of those things too. It's all about layering. And hopefully you're in an area that it's going to be a bit more dry after some time. But this has like, I don't know, at least four or five different layers. So let's say this, this middle one here. 
started off with white and then I let that dry. And then I did a bit more red and then I mixed a bit more white in and then I did, so it's all about layering back and forth and back and forth. Um, okay. So if yours is looking like mine is up here, uh, it's just cause you haven't layered it enough. Uh, so what we'll do actually now is just because I know we're kind of cutting it close on time is we're going to do the bottom part. And that way, if you want to, you can swap back and forth the top and the bottom. So while you wait for this to dry, you can do a little bit more of this. Okay. Uh, why I wait for the bottom, because we probably like, you might think that we could have done that first, but why I like to wait to do the bottom is so that the reflections actually match the color of the fireworks in the air. So you kind of want to do like a mirrored version. So we're going to paint the waves. But what I like to do is make sure that like if the yellow one is the highest, that one's going to be the lowest. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's that kind of like if this was like, you know, a mirror and it's mirroring on water. So I like yeah. to wait until I was finished with like what colors I knew were going to be on what fireworks, but you can always change that up a bit later too. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I know that was a very confusing answer, but <laughs> just ask me again if I don't make sense. All right. So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this angled brush again and hopefully you still have a little bit of blue left because what we want to do is actually that's actually kind of still wet so that's kind of nice. You're going to take, yeah, we're going to take your little, your angled brush and you're going to take the color that, like I said, mirrors. So let's say right in the top center is my, is my yellow. So on the bottom here, we're going to put a little bit of white down first. And you're gonna do it in like a oops, in like a little wavy pattern. So really just the traditional waves like the kind of loop down and loop up. And you can do it a little less, like if you wanna do it like really subtly, like this, where you're just flicking your brush. And this is the part where you get to really layer on top of the colors. So this part's actually really nice if your paint is still wet. So if you want to, you can put a little bit more blue down and make this bottom section a bit more wet. I like to start off with only white first um, so that you can have like a little bit of a base because if you try and paint yellow directly on this blue, it'll probably not even show up. So again, you just want to kind of flick your brush a little bit and your waves will get a little bit smaller. So if you're finding it hard with this brush, you can take the smaller one as well. Your waves will get smaller the farther they go back. So maybe the, the ones in the front are going to be the biggest. And then as you, I'm trying to kind of exaggerate this so you can see it, but as you go back, you can make them a little bit smaller and you can even just dot them along here if that looks a little better. And then on top of that is where you're gonna do your colors. So you're gonna take, I like to take even the same brush without even cleaning off my brush so you have a bit of white um, still on there. And you can just do the same waves, but with a little bit of yellow. And if it mixes with the blue, that's okay because that's what the color would be doing anyways. If yellow is reflecting onto the blue water, it will look a little bit green anyway. I'm going to take a little bit of red because I know over here is red. And if you're finding it that your details are getting too thick or too lost or like really bulky, you can take your smaller brush and go in. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue now just to get mixed up in here. I'm just going to go back and paint a little bit of blue in here. And this is where you get really fun with like how your colors mix because it can be very, oh sorry, I moved this down. It can get really, really nice with how your colors mix on your canvas. And this will be kind of almost out of your control, but it's pretty fun to see what they'll do. Am I making sense to everyone? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And they don't have to be perfect. They don't even have to be going in the same direction if you don't want them to. 
They don't have to be, they're waves, right? So they're all over the place anyway. And I just like to find, this part I find takes a little bit just because it will take a little bit to layer up. So if you want to put your white down and wait for it to dry a little bit, or maybe you're not done coloring, you can go, this is where you can kind of go back and forth. Yeah, that's starting to look really pretty at the bottom with all the mixing. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the whole Bob Ross thing where he just says, you know, there's no mistakes, it's just happy accidents. Mm -hmm. I like to throw that in there in my painting classes. <laughs> but once you kind of get used to it, you'll just like layer the colors on top of each other. And then you can go back and forth to the top and bottom and just kind of make sure that the colors are corresponding. And even if they don't, not a big deal. I'm very off to the side, so it's fairly hard to paint, but. Mm -hmm. Katie, could you just talk a little bit more about like what you're doing with those waves? Because my waves don't look anything like your waves. That's okay. So Mary, I think you're being too hard on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the first thing I said is that your waves don't have to look like mine, but if you want them to. So what I like to do is kind of just like, it's, it's hard to explain because I, I think it's just so, um, it's one of those things that is, is a bit more learned. Um, but what I like to do is just kind of do small strokes and almost like a little U shape. Does that make sense? Like almost if you're drawing a U over and over and over again. Um, yeah, okay, I right. get it. Yeah, yeah. and Because, because there's going to be paint colors underneath everything that's wet, then you're going to get different uh, I'm doing this one obviously a bit more quickly, but um, you're going to get just these different kind of color combinations that are going to mix up. Like your red's going to mix a bit with your white and your blue is going to mix a bit and it'll kind of look like it's reflecting onto the wave. So maybe it's a very calm night and you want to just draw, you could also just draw, let's say, um, I'll do this really quickly, but let's say you wanted to just do lines. Maybe the U-shape is not for you and you just want to do lines across your canvas. So you can do that instead and you can just swipe back. Oh, that doesn't, you can't really see that at all. Oh, zoom. But yeah, maybe you just want to do, instead of waves, you just want to do lines across your canvas. So you can just do kind of smaller lines and you can make them bigger close up and smaller as you move away. And then you can do the reflections on top of that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes okay. sense. Just you make it look so easy, that's all. <laughs> the, U tip, the U tip was excellent. Like that just changed my world a bit. It's like, it's funny because as I like, when I try to explain things to even the kids, I, I realize like I need to shrink my diction down sometimes because I, I don't remember how I learned to do this stuff. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's so tough when you know how to do something. I always said this about, I had a math teacher, this is, I digress, but I had a math teacher who never understood why I didn't understand math because he was so good at math. Yep. 
And I realized too, it's a little bit, it's kind of like that when I try to explain painting because I've just, I've done it for so long that I don't remember how to start it at kind of, you know, square one. And, and so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's like you must when memory. you start with you shapes do is yeah. do U shapes or whatever it is. Right. Or if maybe you just want to do lines or, um, yeah, but just especially with water, it's, it's repetitive motion, right? So whatever is happening on this side of the lake is probably happening on this side of the lake. So if you want to just keep doing use, and then if you think as you look further away, they're going to get a little bit smaller. And maybe by the time they get all the way back there, they're not even U-shapes anymore. They're just little dots. And then again, this will, because we only have so little time, um, this might be a, an after um, after class type thing, but you can kind of go back and forth and keep adding layers on so that it, uh, you know, builds up your painting. Acrylic painting is all about layering and putting stuff on top of stuff, so. And do you put those little action marks in kind of final step at the end? Yep. So I just did, I waited until my black was completely dry to do those because I knew I, I didn't want to like layer them. I just wanted them um, to be really kind of thin and small. So you can just go with your little tiny brush and you can just go, imagine you're kind of still coming from the center, but just a little bit outside of that, if that makes sense. And I just like to do it. Oh, and then I guess the final step too, before anybody goes or anything, um, that again is optional, but I like to do little tiny, like just little squiggly lines coming up from your city to represent where your fireworks flew out of. So if you just wanna start, let's say we'll do one in the middle and they don't even have to lead to the fireworks. They don't have to go right to the tail or anything. I'm just gonna start from here and just do a little wavy line out. Can everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. That kind of like puts it all together. Yeah. So again, it's, it's so much like I realized too, when I, when I was coming up with the painting, I was like, okay, well, I need to figure out something that I know we can fit in a short amount of space. And it's a little bit tougher over Zoom because I'm not there and I can't be like walking around and being like, yeah, that's great. Or if you have questions, you can't just be like, hey, you know what I mean? I mean, you can be, but, um, but I was trying to come up with something that was a little bit quicker, uh, a little bit easier. And I probably in my head didn't count <laughs> correctly because now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, there's so much drawing time involved in either side, but hopefully that's kind of at least gets you started in a direction that will let you have a finished painting. <laughs> yeah. I think it's great. And then to the last, the last couple steps, um, I didn't end up painting the sides of these, but if you want to, you can always paint the sides. I like to just finish the painting first and see, because um, sometimes the sides of the painting might not be the, the whole background. Like you could paint this black, or maybe if you wanted to, you could paint the sides like bright yellow or something. Um, or you could paint them bright red so that when it's hanging on the wall, you can see the sides kind of, I don't know, maybe it's hanging on a black wall and you want it to really pop off. And then the very last thing, um, that you need to do, especially, is sign your artwork. <laughs> Regardless of if you don't like it, or especially if it's going to someone else, sign your artwork, put your name anywhere on it. I like to put a little symbol in the, the right-hand corner, but you can put, you know, you can put it up at the top. I know some people sign, like, big scribblies. You can put it on the sides. Whatever you want to do, just make sure that somebody knows it's yours. It could be worth Also, for anyone who still wants to, like, mess around with theirs for a while after, um, the picture of the painting that Katie did is on um, our social media on Instagram and Facebook, so you can always reference back to it as well. And I can hold that up a little bit too if anybody, you know, they, they look so different because this one was so, but anyways. So how is everyone doing at home with their paintings? Are they getting there almost done? 
that Mangus? one thumbs up. Mangus I, uh, looks like we hold them up to the screen, maybe. I like it, cat. Oh, nice! If everyone holds up their their picture to the screen, I'll make I'll take a photo. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh wow, Lynn, that looks beautiful. Lynn, that's marvelous. Oh, that looks awesome! Oh, that's great. Look. Wow, <gasps> that looks amazing. So good. Wow. Oh, man, as well. <laughs> I cannot put mine up. Here, what does yours look like? Not like that. It looks <laughs> like this. Fine. I got caught up in the U's and then I went into circles and <laughs> then I went into some meditation. So I love it. That's Thank awesome. you. <laughs> as long as everyone had fun, right? Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Mary, how did yours turn out? Well, it, it turned out okay. It looked like someone in your it house so put good. their own spin on the painting. Yeah. It? it looked like someone in your house put their own spin on the painting. Oh, yes. Yes. My my son is fully covered in paint, so we're <laughs> Where? Yes. <laughs> this all washes out, right? Because I've got more paint on me than I have on anything else. I've got paint on my, well, from flicking the white, I've got paint on my computer speaker, but that's fine. <laughs> I've got, you know, and, uh, Acrylic paint is washable, but it will stain your clothing if you are not careful. Uh, if you have acrylic paint on it right now, I would put it in the washer right now. <laughs> yeah, I'll be. I'm not so much worried about the clothes. It's more about the skin. I've got. I've left to wash my hands about three times now. <laughs> oh no no, that'll come off easily. Just some soap and I water. I noticed. I noticed that it almost peels off in like little. Nah. Thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Organizing. Thank you. Have a great Thank night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. Okay, we should do a fall session. Yeah, that'd be nice. In person. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right. Here we go.